Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer. You know, I must confess, I'm a little upset. I came home the other day, and my wife had been on eBay all day long. I guess I better lower the price. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Nemesis Lockdown from Awaken Realms. <laughs> Hello everybody, we'll get back to the review in just a second. I just want to take a moment to ask you to go ahead and check out and subscribe to my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. Please check that out, please subscribe, and now, back to the review. Nemesis Lockdown picks up right where your Nemesis base game left off. Essentially, the survivors from the Nemesis ship, they make it to a Mars colony where there's all sorts of kooky things going on, and believe it or not, the aliens have arrived as well. Now, I'm not going to go through the nuts and bolts of this game because a lot of it is very similar to the original uh, Nemesis core game, but there are some significant differences, and that's what I'm going to focus on in my rules overview. Now, first of all, you have new map uh, configurations. This, is, of course, is not a spaceship. It is a Mars colony. You have a subterranean uh, field of the game. You're underground in Mars. You have various tokens, uh, exploration tokens that represent that sub the subterranean uh, systems that are going on. A lot of them work the same way, doors closing, fires, maintenance problems, etc., etc. But um, as I say, the map layout's quite a bit different, and you actually have two sides to the board, which um, you can have kind of a, a tougher challenge on the other side. Now, this base has different levels. It has three different levels here. And these levels are going to be important as the game progresses. And you can move through stairways, which can be a little scary. But you can also go ahead and take an elevator. Now, key to all of this is you need power. You have four different power tokens. They're labeled one, labeled one two, three, and four. Um, and they can either be on or off. And sometimes you're going to want to turn the lights on or turn the lights off. Usually you want the lights on because it means it's safer. If the lights are uh, dark, then it's not as safe. Usually if you're drawing cards, there is an option for if it's dark, then you have to do something that's, that's scarier. So generally you want the lights to be on. And again, there are certain rooms, certain places where you can manipulate where the lights are going on, where the lights are going off. One other thing, too, about lights and power. Um, if you are fighting an alien in lights, you're actually going to roll some different die. You get more powerful die. So combat is actually enhanced if the lights are on. Now, some rooms have a computer symbol. This means you can take a computer action. Now, um, you can do computer actions in the other game. In this game, they're a little bit different. You have a computer deck, a dedicated computer deck. And you actually have one computer card face up. So if you take a computer action, you can look at the different actions that are listed on that card. You can take one of those actions. Then you place that card at the bottom of the deck and reveal the next top card. Now, there's another system here, too. Um, you have the laboratory where you can discover alien weaknesses, just like in the core game. But here, gaining knowledge itself is important. You can gain knowledge through various encounters and other things that happen. Um, but essentially, why you need to gain knowledge is because you've got the different weakness cards that come out. But you have to kind of cross a certain threshold on your, with your knowledge marker to be able then to take advantage of that weakness. You have to know about it, essentially. So that's one of the things that's also going on in this game. You're trying to gain knowledge to make you smarter to, in order to deal with taking down these uh, alien threats. Now, the survivors from the original Nemesis that they are in this game, um, they actually start out with a higher knowledge level than just the people that are hanging out on the base because they face the threat before. Now at one point in the game characters can do certain things to flip their knowledge token. They've essentially activated their knowledge. Uh, this means that they're pretty smart and uh, that may be a victory condition at the end of the game or it may just be useful for other reasons. 
Now you also have something in this game called contingencies. Essentially, the corporation running this, this Mars colony, there's certain protocols that they're going to observe if the um, if things get out of hand. So you've got different spots on the game for certain contingency uh, markers. You've got the, the, the end one at the game, which is the company's contingency. You're going to place one, two on the board, and then every character gets one of the contingencies. It's kind of like a, a, a clue mechanic here because you all know what your contingencies are you're going to try to find out what other people's contingencies are so you know that what the final contingency is in the game so that you can try to make sure that you are on top of that one now at the very end of the game you're going to reveal that final contingency and if you have not met the specific uh, conditions of that contingency you are going to die now in a way the contingencies take the place of the um uh, engines and the navigation in the original game. Certain things you just have to do, just have to make sure are on the up and up uh, before you end the game. Now, of course, you're trying to fulfill your specific objectives. Um, they work the same way as in the base game. you got a corporate objective, personal objective. After the first alien appears, you pick one, and that's what you have to do to, to, to win the game, along with surviving and making sure you're, you, you outlive the contingency. Now, the game functions, as I say, much like the original game. You have objectives you're trying to fulfill. You have a personal objective, a, a corporate objective. After the first alien appears, you pick that and you go with it. And then you're just trying to survive and trying to survive the contingency. But how you survive is you need to exit the facility. Now, there's a few ways you can do this. First of all, there are... Uh, cargo supply systems I think is what it's called these are CSS they're kinda like the escape pods you're essentially sending these cargo units off of Mars back toward Earth and you actually set the different tokens out indicating okay these are the CSS systems and if you're in the appropriate room when that one launches you go with it you're you're out of the game and you've completed that part of the game the problem is you never know which ones are going to launch because they're all face down so you can be in a room hoping it'll launch but when that turn happens and it launches if it's not the correct one if you're not in the right room then you're not going anywhere also, you can escape the facility by going to the very top of the facility uh, outside and then going to a nearby bunker to hunker down. Bunker to hunker. What you're going to do here is if you have an Enviro suit, you can just leave and walk to the bunker. However, if you don't have the Enviro suit, you need to take the rover. The rover can drive you over there. Now, there's certain protocols you have to do. You, you may have to do a noise check, see if an alien shows up or something. But ideally, you want to get out of the facility because you don't know what's going to happen. So in a nutshell, those are the big major changes, but as I say, the game plays very similarly to regular good old-fashioned Nemesis. Like I say, you've got the objectives, you are fighting the aliens, you're doing the noise rolls, you're having to deal with mechanical problems and fires and being slimed, you're, you take damage more or less the same way, you're carrying items, you're finding items, you're searching items, you're, you're doing everything pretty much like you do in the original Nemesis game, except with these different uh, specific rules that I've been talking about. But in the end of the day, you're simply trying to survive, not get infected. You're trying to beat those contingencies, trying to get out of the bunker and fulfill your uh, objectives for this game. If you can do all of those things, then you win Nemesis Lockdown. So Nemesis Lockdown. Um, I played the original Nemesis not too long ago, a few months back, and I was, I was impressed with it. Now, I had played it actually for the first time in Texas, and I, I didn't like it that much. We kind of played some things wrong, and I was like, eh, I don't know. And then I gave it another chance. I actually saw it at a store, good price. I thought, nah, I'll try it again. So I went ahead, I did it, and then I, I, I put my review out there, and I really liked it. I, I, I thought it was a lot of fun. I really like Nemesis, a very thematic and very fun and scary game. So anyway, I, I, after I completed that first review, I contacted the good people at Awaken Realms. I said, hey, I'd be interested in, in reviewing some expansions or whatever. And they said, what would you do? And I just on my radar, I didn't even know if the lockdown was a complete standalone game. And I thought, you know, I'd like to try lockdown. So they went ahead and they sent it to me. And they sent me that with the kind of um, stretch goals, which has expansions in there I haven't even gotten into yet. It's got expansions. It's got, uh, uh, you know, cool minis uh, and other things. And the, the doors that break apart, which are pretty cool. There's a ton of stuff that came with the um, uh, with, with the stretch goal expansion for the Kickstarter. So I was able to get that, and um, so it's kind of fun playing with, with some of those additional minis, the rover and what have you. It's kind of cool. Um, so I'm playing this game, and of course a lot of it is very familiar. As I say... Basically, it plays the same as Nemesis. But then these, these new rules give it a little spice and sugar. They mix things up. They make it its own game. 
I got to tell you, I really, first of all, I, I liked the idea of knowledge. I liked how you had to, you have to increase your knowledge in order to use the weakness cards. I thought that was thematic and I thought it worked and, and it was pretty fun. I really liked too the power. Um, you know, it's very scary because like I said, you get the, 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 the special dice when it's light, so it's a good thing. Um, but when it's dark, your dice aren't as powerful and you know, it's scary and, and there's questions about where you're going to go and how you're going to get there because you can take the elevator, but of course you got to have power in the elevator. But then two, um, if you can take the stairs, but the stairs are always in darkness, so that's pretty scary. It's just a scary game <laughs> because when you're rolling those those um, noise checks and you know an alien's coming, it's terrible. We played this game, uh, we had all five of us playing this game a few weeks ago down in uh, Salt Lake. And uh, I was excited because Zach joined us, and Darren was there, and Duffy and George, and it was just a, it was just a good group to play this kind of a game with. And right out of the bat, we were just kind of swarmed with aliens, and it was rough. It was rough. Pretty much all of us, one by one, are killed off. We're picked off just like a horror movie. And Zach was able to get um, make it pretty much to the end of the game, did everything right, and the contingency killed him. And that's one thing I'm not sure about yet, is the contingencies. I understand you kind of need something we all have to worry about, like the engines and navigation from the original. I get that. But it seems that the, the, the system here with the contingencies is probably, to me, not my favorite part. Because, you know, as Zach said, it's already an incredibly tough game. And there's so much you got to keep in your head with the contingencies. I'm debating next time I play it, just not even worrying about them. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But, uh, so, so there's that. I'm not, a, I'm not a huge, I'm not sold on the contingencies. I may learn to appreciate them later. The computer cards are cool. Um, they give a new, again, new spice and sugar to that. And the CSS system of the escape pods is really cool. Because, of course, in the regular game, um, once you find the escape pods, you can just use them to get off the ship. Here, you don't know when they're going to trigger. And, in fact, there was a point in the game where Zack... I mean, most of us were still alive at this point, And Zack was, was going to hunker down in one of these CSS pods, just waiting for it to blast off. Um, but then aliens started coming, he couldn't do that, and it turned out that that pod wasn't going to blast until much later anyway. But again, it was, kind of a, it was kind of a fun, scary, and thematic idea there that we really got a kick out of. Um, but again, too, the, just the same sense of paranoia and, and, and who can you trust is present in this game that was present in the original. There's a point where, where Duffy found himself in a room with an alien, and he's fighting this alien, and George uh, says, oh, I'm going to get rid of that alien, but of course he does it by venting the room. <laughs> Kills Duffy, too, in the process. <clears throat> so it, it's, you know, fun fun backstabbing and, and stuff like that, and who can you trust? Uh, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just throughout this game. Both Nemesis and Nemesis Lockdown are probably some of the most thematic games I've ever played. In fact, I might go so far as to say they're the most thematic non-IP games I've ever played. Now, it's loosely based on Alien. It doesn't have the IP license, but you feel like you're playing a game of Aliens here, and it's incredibly thematic, incredibly thematic. I really enjoy this experience. And this, you know, I've said this before and I'll say it again. There's some games, you know, you kind of play to win. And I find simpler games and often abstract games, that's why you play them. For me, a lot of games and a lot of modern games, yeah, you're playing to win, but it's really about the story. It's really about the journey. And that, to me, is the case with Nemesis and Nemesis Lockdown. I didn't, you know, I, I mean, I was kind of upset that I died early because I still wanted to play. But at the same time, you know, we were all so caught up in the story. I was expecting some of the guys to leave after they died. We all stayed. We all wanted to see what happened because it's such a good story. This is, this is the kind of game, it's a movie that you're all a part of. And you're making it up as you go along. And to me, it's so much more richer and more rewarding oftentimes than seeing an actual movie, right? Because it's a, it's a unique story. And it's a story that you and your friends have and can relive and tell. It's kind of a secret that nobody else knows except for the people that were there, right? And I love it. I love it. So one final thing I want to address here. Obviously, I love the game. Obviously. It's a tremendously fun game. But the one thing I want to address is... If you've got the original Nemesis, do you need Nemesis Lockdown? Or if you don't have either, which one should you get? Um, well, 
you know, I've thought about this and I kind of go back and forth because there's stuff about both I like. But gun to my head, I'd say if, if you don't have either and you got to buy one, I'd probably lean toward the original. Um, if not, if for no other reason, it's it's a little simpler, more straightforward. Um, there's still a learning curve, but I think it's a little bit easier with the base game than it is with Lockdown. Um, but if you've got Nemesis, do you need Lockdown? Uh, I'd probably say no. I'd probably say you've got enough of, you get the same experience out of one that you get out of the other. And it really comes down to just some fun little mechanics and, 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 and the intricacies of what you're doing. And if that kind of thing appeals to you, we'll go pick it up. You'll have fun with this one too. But I think if you're looking for the experience, I don't know that you need both. Now, I'll probably keep both for a while and play both, but I, my gut is telling me after a while, I'll probably get rid of one or the other, and I'm thinking it'll probably be locked down. But I got to play them both some more. Um, so that's kind of ambiguous. It's not as clean cut as I'd like to give you um, when I say which one should you buy. But that's just kind of where I'm at. I, I, I've got to explore both of these games a little bit more before I can, I think, really definitively answer that. Now, all that being said, I really enjoy Nemesis Lockdown. Um, all things being equal, if you're eyeing this one and you think this one looks right for you, buy it. You won't be disappointed. Great fun. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We'd ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to please check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about uh, military history and fun things like that. Please subscribe to that channel. We'd really appreciate it. And please give a thumb to this video on Board Game Geek. That helps us out a lot as well. Well, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I recently went to a new restaurant in town called Karma. The food was great, but uh, all they had were just desserts. Yeah, I imagine like people like just stomping everywhere. <laughs>